Okay, in the last video, we saw that when we generated a lot of different output currents from a single reference generator, we had some systematic error. And so what we're going to do to fix that is, going, is we're going to add a buffer, Q1A, that is going to buffer the voltage between the bottom of the reference resistor and all the connected bases of the transistors. So with this configuration, we can say that the reference current is equal to VDD minus 2 times VDE divided by R ref. This is because of the stack of the two transistors. So we see we have two VDE at the bottom of the reference resistor. And now we can write KCL at the reference node. IR is equal to IC0 plus IB1A. Now we know that IB1A, we know that IB1A is just equal to the collector current of Q1A divided by beta plus 1, or the emitter current of Q1A divided by beta plus 1. And that emitter current is equal to the sum of all of the base currents. So we can then say that this is equal to N times IC0 divided by beta times 1 divided by beta plus 1, making another substitution now back into the original KCL expression. We can say that IR is equal to IC0 plus IC0. times n divided by beta times beta plus 1. And now, if we make a substitution and just assume that all the output currents are equal, so in other words, IC1 is equal to IC0 is equal to I0, we can write that the output current is equal to IR divided by 1 plus in divided by beta times beta plus 1. Now we still have a systematic error. But you'll notice that the systematic error is reduced by this factor beta times beta plus 1. And this is why this is called a beta helper. Now, one thing that we haven't shown, we've shown only NPN current errors and also NMOS current errors. It's important to note that we can do this with a PNP or a PMOS as well. So here we have examples of a PNP current error and a PMOS current error. Now, in both of these cases, we call these current sources because this, the current is being sourced from the supply, whereas in the NMOS cases or the NPN cases, we call them current sinks. Using combinations of both of these, we can generate all the bias voltages and bias currents that we need. However, these current source topologies only have a single transistor at the, in the output path, and that means they have relatively low impedances. So in the next sets of videos, we will learn how to increase the impedance of the current source and current sink mirrors that we've just seen, and we'll do that using things like cascades or cascodes. We'll do that in the next video.